I'm actually Alvaro Leso. I'm a pre-sales engineer at Uptake2. Uh, Ash couldn't make it right now. Um, so a, a little bit about Uptake. Uptake is a um, predictive analytics company. Whoop. There are, um, sorry about that. So Uptake is a predictive analytics company and actually one of the last slides showed by Vega came out really handy. Actually what we do is adding that next layer that integrated all, all the data sources coming from your company and we run analytics and machine learning algorithms on top of that data in order to get and to deliver financial outcomes. Um, in this case, I'm gonna talk about a particular case of a project we did uh, in Chile, uh, working on a SAG mill, and actually what we did, we ingested data coming from the machine, um, from ERP systems from this company, and we, we were able to give uh, insights around line, uh, liner wear and liner life extension and the way we surface those instances is through an application similar to what we're seeing right now on the screen. So <clears throat> we, we've heard throughout this conference about the cultural changes, about pushing, um, pushing the, the, next, the next step in innovation to the people uh, that are actually operating the machines. And we feel like the best way to do that is through an intuitive application that can serve anybody throughout the, the organization. So what we're seeing right now is a uh, a quick dashboard of how this plan is running, what are the, the main KPIs that need to be addressed, what are the, the real-time outcomes that, are this, uh, that this plan is delivering. We can see production rates, how am I doing next to the thresholds I've set up, next to the objective that I have as a company. I can have a quick view of, of, my, of the sectors of my, of my plant, and actually I can, go, whoop, I can go a little bit down and have a look of, okay, of the th uh, 30 whole trucks that I have, three are retained, four are, are down, but what I, I really see it's a problem in the, in the SAG mill, right? I see that I have only one, and the health status of that machine is not ideal. I actually have a problem there. So I wanna go deep, and this is the moment where the VP of Ops picks up the phone and say, hey, I wanna talk with the maintenance manager that is charge of this concentration plan, and I wanna drive my discussions around the SAG mill. I can see that I have a few bilge pumps, but I know that in a forward-looking um, approach to maintenance, I can see that this SAG mill is at risk. So I click there, and again, I have a quick view of how my asset is running. Um, if I'm getting the KPIs that I've set up for that asset, what's the throughput, what has the, what has the history been for this asset uh, in the past week, the past month, this is highly configurable. I can show up whatever KPI is important for me, or whatever information I can surface from different systems, from ERP, uh, such as uh, SAP or Oracle. I can bring data coming from conditioning monitoring system, vibration data. We're gonna see that in a second. And I can monitor, in this case, the customer was in, interested in monitoring linerware. It was a big uh, expense for them to do the, the 3D scans and actually deciding when was the right uh, time to change the liner. So <clears throat> one of the things we, do, we did for them is helping them out with their plan maintenance strategy. And by, by doing this, we leverage a huge library that Aptek has recently acquired from the um, energy, nuclear, um, and manufacturing space called the Asset Strategy Library. And basically, this strategy library is around 800 assets and all the different failure modes in which those assets can fail. So we were seeing by looking at SAP data that the most important failure contributors that we needed to, to attack was uh, clock cabinet fan in the refrigeration unit, misadjusted interlocks, and by leveraging our, this asset strategy library, we were able to say, look, if you change your frequency of your PMs, into this order, you're actually saving around 10,000K from what your OEM is recommending. And we all know, we all have a car, and we all know that the OEMs recommend excessive plant maintenance uh, activities. But actually, I can, you know, I can go from looking at data coming from the machine, what's the speed, and this is when it gets really interested, and you can have actual machine learning algorithms that can actually, to that are able to detect anomalies or predict failures. In this, guy, in this case, um, our model was looking at different sources of data coming from the machine, from RPM, 
um, torque, amount of water that the machine was handling, the size of the, of the balls inside the sag mill, um, and eventually the, one of the m most important readings that we were having was the oil, the oil pressure at the, at the pockets of the machine. And by looking at all these signals simultaneously, we were able to detect multi, uh, multivariate anomalous behavior and give an insight to this customer in saying, hey, you, we think that um, this liner will have a high, high chance of wearing out in about a week. So it's about time you have an inspection made and you know, get your maintenance team working to, to change that. So what's really interesting about this is actually from this tool, you can go and take action on it. And so you can go and create a task. This will push the information um, to your ERP system, to your SAP, to your Maximo. And <clears throat> once you do that, you, the, the, beauty, the beauty of this is actually by looking at past data, you can pre-populate a work order data and that will save time and will save uh, data, entry, uh, data entry errors from your, from your technicians. When you go and you submit a task, you will actually create a plan, an action plan for this, for this activity. And when you go and see what are the tasks that, ha uh, that I have opened for this, for this plant, I can actually see the last one I created for the, for the SAG mill. When I go there, I can actually see who's the owner of this task, so I can manage um, ERP data and ERP work order task from the same application that I'm getting the insights. And I, I can always relate that activity to the fault that I just got from a predictive model. So this is a way that we're helping companies kind of move from a, from a reactive uh, approach to maintenance to a more of a proactive approach to maintenance. And we see that this is not always the way to go, right? Sometimes numbers don't make sense and we don't want to instrument a machine just for the sake of it. So we help companies across that way. From Reliability Center, just by looking at historical data and relating the data that we see from historical information to the failure modes that are being mitigated, to a more of a condition-based approach in which we detect anomaly, anomalies from the signals we're receiving. And eventually what we want to do is relate those anomalies to failures that we see in SAP or something like that. So eventually what we would do is whatever signal that we can, signature that we can see in the data, we can say, hey, there's a high likelihood that this equipment is going to fail uh, in two weeks. This is just a sample of one of the applications that we have. For mining, we, would, we work with whole trucks. We have around 20 models for whole trucks. Uh, from, you know, from equipment failure, concrete equipment failure, but we also have molds around oil analysis where we can see trends and give prescriptions about what may fail, what may you know, work inadequately. Um, but also we're, we're leveraging our asset strategy library to help uh, in this transition from reactive to proactive for fixed assets. So we've seen uh, crusher mills, we've seen sag mills, we've seen slurry pumps, We've seen reciprocating compressors, other types of compressors. So um, this has been a very brief introduction or showing off how an application can help out. But we invite you to come to our booth and learn more about what we can do and what we've done in the space. Thank you very much.